All right, thanks for watching and today I would like to solve a really cool problem you may or may not have thought about. Namely, find all the continuous functions f such that f of x y equals f of x plus f of y. If you think about this problem a little bit, then there should be an obvious contender for this, namely the function ln, because ln of x y equals ln of x plus ln of y. And it turns out uh, this is pretty much the only choice up to a constant. And why is that? Basically what we'll do, we'll choose a clever function g that transforms this problem into one that we already know. Namely, consider the following function g of x equals f of e to the x. So it's like the Megan Fox of functions. Megan Fex, I guess. Or I guess FedEx, I don't know. Um, and in particular, what happens to this function g? Let's calculate g of x plus y. And you will see why. That becomes f of e to the x plus y. And that becomes f of e to the x times e to the y. And that turns out to be, again by our identity, that's f of e to the x plus f of e to the y. Again, f transforms products into addition, and that then just becomes g of x plus g of y. And so therefore, g satisfies a very famous identity, which is called the Cauchy's functional identity, and of which I've already made a video on, so you can look at it at the, in the description. And in particular, it turns out the only continuous functions that satisfy this identity are the linear functions. So in particular, what we get is g of x equals c times x, where uh, c is just given by g of 1. And at this point, I would like to pause for a second because there are many discontinuous functions which satisfy this as well, but the examples are kind of weird. It has to do with the basis, you know, of the real numbers over the rational numbers, and it has to do something with square root of 2, again, which is in the previous video. And in particular, to get discontinuous examples, start with this example here, and then you can just plug in f back there. All right, but anyway, going back to our continuous case, which is much happier. So now what we found, we found that if you let g of x be f of e to the x, then g of x is a constant times x. And in particular, what is f of x? Well, notice you can write this as f of um, e to the ln of x, at least if x is positive, and then mm, you then get this, so f of e to the ln of x, that's the same thing as g of ln of x, but g of x is a constant times x, so this just becomes constant times ln of x. And last but not least, how do you find this constant? Well, the constant c was given by g of 1, but g of 1 is just f of e to the 1, which is just f of e. So in fact, those are all the functions f, continuous, such that f of x uh, equals f of x y equals f of x plus f of y, at least I guess for positive x. All right, and what did we find so far? We found that f of x equals c times ln of x if x is positive. Now again, this is continuous for positive x. I do want to um, mention that. And the question is, uh, what about at 0 and what about if x is negative? So at 0, this is not too bad because f of 0, that is f of 0 times 0, and that's f of 0 plus f of 0. And this cancels out, and in the end we get that f of 0 has to be 0. And again, it do doesn't make it continuous, but I think at this point it's all right. And now what about for negative x? Well, notice f of negative x 
that is f of negative 1 times x, and that becomes f of negative 1 plus f of x. But the question is, what is f of negative 1? Well, notice the following thing. So f of 1, which is c times ln of 1, which is um, 0, that's the same thing as f of negative 1 times f of negative 1. And uh, what we get is, this is f of negative 1 plus f of negative 1, which is 2 times f of negative 1. And so 2 times f of negative 1 equals 0, and in particular, f of negative 1 is 0. Which basically tells us that this cancels out, and we get that f of negative x equals f of x. So actually, this becomes an even function automatically. And with this, we can finally say our, uh, what our function is. If you want the grand conclusion, we basically get f of x equals c times ln of x if x is positive, 0 if x is 0, and c, so f of minus x, c of ln of minus x if x is negative, which you can conveniently abbreviate as simply c times ln of absolute value of x, except you define it to be a 0 at 0. So strictly speaking, the only uh, con continuous function is just a zero function. But it's still interesting. And it kind of looks like that, uh, ln of x, like this. Goes down, goes down, and at zero, it's zero. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.